am reading from the Gospel of John, from your authorized version of the scriptures. Please follow me along, word for word, verse by verse. Okay? As you saw in the title of this video, this is a response video. Okay? But first, scripture. John chapter 3. Verses 25 on to the close of the chapter. John chapter 3, verses 25 on to the close of the chapter. Follow me along, word for word, verse by verse. Young man, if you happen to be watching me, number one, young man, young man, and I'm not talking about you up north, so go put your head in the toilet, okay? I'm talking about someone else who might actually be of the Church of the Living God, okay? Young man, if you are watching me, okay, see this? Get the authorized version, okay? The non-King James version is not God's word, okay? All right? You need the authorized version of the scriptures, okay? Okay, number one, you need the authorized version of the scriptures. If you are watching me, young man, please follow along, okay? Okay? I could not contact you because I don't know how to get a hold of you. Or else I would have done so. I'm not going to name you or your channel. I'm not going to do that. I don't play like that. But we are going to address what you spoke about. Because it was quite lacking, dear young man. Okay? So, but I've said John chapter 3, verses 25 on to the close of the chapter. Then there arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptizeth, and all men come to him. Right away, verse 26, uh, I was asked, um, apparently I, I finally saw that, the, um, did everybody see um, the Holy Ghost uh, signifying that Jesus is the Christ? Uh, I believe so, yes. I believe others than John saw that sight. Um, this kind, of, this verse is a uh, help to that, to show that more than just John saw the Holy Ghost descending like as a dove on Christ, okay? It was more than John, but that's a different topic. Let's continue. John answered, verse 27, and said, A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. Yes! If this counsel of or work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, even though you try, ye shall not be able to overthrow it. Okay? And this echoes to what our Lord said in the presence of Pontius Pilate. Thou couldest do nothing to me unless it was given you from above. And that's me bradizing that. Excuse me, but, okay? Let's read verse 27 again. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. Ye yourselves bear me witness that I said, I am not the Christ, but that I am sent before him. He that hath the bride, the bride, the church of the living God, the body of Christ, okay, is the bridegroom. But the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. Verse 30, while we're looking at this whole thing in context. He must increase, but I must decrease. Okay, John was the forerunner to prepare the way for the Lord. Okay, John was the forerunner. And John said, he, the Lord, must increase, and I, but I, must decrease. Okay? And right now we see a lot of this happening, verse 30, but it's all backwards. We see men increasing. But seemingly, as, and these men who, men who call themselves Christians, they are increasing. Well, Christ seems to be decreasing. God forbid... God forbid, as if that are, if as if that is possible. But there again, if this counsel or work be of men, it will come to naught, right? Right? So, let's continue. 
He that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. Okay? Right there, verse 31, showing us that, of course, Jesus is the Christ. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? Jesus Christ is God. Okay? Obviously. Okay? And the words that he was speaking were, were not earthly words. Okay? And what he hath seen and heard, that he testifieth. And no man receiveth his testimony. Yeah. Because our Lord received not honor from men. He that hath received his testimony has set to his seal that God is true. For he whom God has sent speaketh the words of God. For God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. For the Father loveth the Son, and hath given all things into his hand. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abideth on him. Verse 30, the focal point of what we're looking at this today. Okay? We read the context, so there's no doubt. Okay? He must increase, but I must decrease. You see, dear friends, Church of the Living God, we're going to go over things that we've gone over before, but bear this in mind. The days are evil. Time is short. And at this day and age, our Lord Jesus Christ could call us up at any moment. Don't believe, oh, they wouldn't be able to get that temple built in, uh, in uh, time or whatnot for the time frame of the time of James Trouble. Ah, that's a bunch of baloney sandwiches, okay? That's nonsense. The Hebrews, as backed by Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, and back by that man of sin, the son of perdition, who will be writing that system of Roman Catholicism. The Hebrews, the Jews, as backed by Catholicism and that man of sin, the son of perdition, they'd be able to get that temple temple up no time flat, boy. Don't, 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 oh, it'd take too long. <laughs> no, it wouldn't. No, it wouldn't. Why? Because that man of sin, the son of perdition, will be financially backing them. There are going to be wars going on all around. But see, they, they need that temple built, that third temple. Roman Catholicism. They want that temple to be built so that that man of sin, the son of perdition, can go into that rebuilt temple, the third temple, that he's going to help finance, okay? So he can go in and say, hey, I'm God. And he's going to look like the Roman Catholic Jesus. Okay, we, We've talked about this before. Okay, If you haven't seen or been here with any of this before that we've talked about, there will be links in the description box. Okay, So he's going to be you know, giving them the money, the fundage for that. Okay, So don't think for a moment that that temple won't be able to be built lickety split. Okay, But, but see, brethren, people, we have to remember. We have to remember. Okay? Second Timothy. Here's your problem, young man. Number one. Number well, number one. Uh, number one, dear, dear young man. I'm not attacking you. I'm not going to name you. Okay? Because I do not think that you are lying, but rather I think that you are in great error. Okay? And I'm going to give you the benefit of a doubt. Okay? Remember, son, this ain't a job. This is a passion. This is a passion, not a job. Okay? Woe be unto those to whom this is just a job. Okay? 2 Timothy chapter 2. It, it, okay? You need to read the scriptures, the authorized version of the scriptures. Anything else is just a Bible. <laughs> and you know that's a soft, uh, soft um, point for a lot of people. When you got these people with that smug look, it's like, these are the scriptures. See that mocking face. Yeah, yeah, these are the scriptures. Everything else is a Bible. But 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 15 on to verse 18. Not 1 Timothy, Brad. <laughs> 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 15 on to verse 18. Okay? Need the scriptures. Number one. 
the authorized version, not the new King James version. Okay, that's a blending of Antiochian and Sir and um, Alexandrian texts. Okay, they're blending fake manuscripts with authentic manuscripts together to come out with a jumbled mess called the non-King James Version, okay? You need to ditch that, son. You need to ditch that. You need to get to the true scriptures, okay? But 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 15 on to verse 18. Study. Study. As I recall, the non-King James Version doesn't have the word study. ESV takes out study. NIV takes out study. Um, the New American Standard takes out study. Okay, Holman Christian Standard, to become the Christian Standard Bible, um, takes out the word study. Satan doesn't want you studying the Scriptures. He wants you to read a Bible, but he don't want you studying the Scriptures, see. God tells you to study, okay? Study. To shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, okay, son, rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth. What this means, what this is called, is being dispensational, okay, or attributing these things unto certain ages, okay, ages within scripture, okay, dispensational. Study to shew thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, people like to argue, it's like, well, divide the scriptures from other things. No, no, the word of truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth, okay? He is not talking about dividing the scriptures from, say, the Buddhist scriptures. What was that, that nag? nag, hamat, something or whatever, or they're not talking about uh, this, um, dividing this from like the Quran or anything. No. God is telling you through the scriptures to study, to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, being dispensational. Okay? This whole book is written for us, but it's not all written to us, okay? This is a Jewish book, okay? The time that we are in right now, this dispensation is the time of the Gentiles. And this dispensation is ra rapidly approaching its end, okay? A dispensation is a period of time where God dispenses things, okay? God's grace is in every dispensation, okay? Some people like to say, well, this is the dispensation of the grace of God. Eh, no, because God's grace is in every single dispensation. If it wasn't, we'd all go up like a puff, see, okay? What makes a dispensation is how one is made right with God, okay? That is what determines a dispensation. I preach and believe and teach that there are seven dispensations, okay? Seven of them, which corresponds with the uh, scripture, absolutely. But what makes a dispensation is, like I said, how people are made right with God in that dispensation. For an example, the very first dispensation in scripture, the Garden of Eden, okay? What was, how was one made right with God in that dispensation, okay? Obedience only. God said, don't eat of that tree, okay? Satan comes along, yea, hath God said. They disobey, and hence, they get kicked out of the Garden of Eden, okay? They also saw God with their own eyes. How does a voice walk unless he has a body? Some of these uh, Jesuit textual critics will say, well, and uh, walk in the garden doesn't mean in the Hebrew. Oh, shut up and go pound some sand. Okay? Yea, hath God said. Okay? Very first dispensation in Scripture. Very first one was obedience. Works only. You got these hyper-dispensationalists who call themselves dispensational, but say that it's faith alone from Genesis on to Revelation. They're lying to you. They are not truly dispensational. They are working for the Vatican. Okay? They are Jesuit coadjutors. They are devils. Watch out for those people. The very first dispensation of Scripture was works. End of story. Okay? End of story. 
not faith alone, okay? So, there alone proves to you that every dispensation within Scripture, what changes in that dispensation is how one is made right with God, okay? Hence, hence, son, in your video, when you were talking about the two things that are required for someone to take the mark of the beast, you're not rightly dividing the word of truth. The way you were putting that forth is as if the church of the living God were going through the time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob. Who is Jacob? Israel. Okay? Israel. But it's the time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob, who took his brother by the heel. Okay? It's the time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob was called Israel. But isn't it interesting? Israel today is not truly being as Israel, but rather being truly as Jacob. It's the time of the Hebrews' trouble, the time of the Jews' trouble. The church of the living God, which many erroneously refer to as Christians, okay? The church of the living God is not going to be going through or in that time of the time of Jacob's trouble. You need to rightly divide the word of truth, young man. And what ends this dispensation is the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble, the redemption of the purchased possession. We have talked about that at length before. I'll put a video in the description box for you, okay? What ends this dispensation? The time of the Gentiles, okay? Gentiles being grafted into the tree of the Jew. What ends this dispensation is the redemption of the purchased possession. See, you read in your video, 2 Thessalonians, what was it, 11 and 12? Or something like that? You you missed out on the context there, son. You're going to preach that. You need to at least make them know, warn them about the catching away. See, what you did, okay, what you have done is kind of making an inference that the body of Christ is going to go through that time period. That's not true. We who are saved, born again, converted, new creatures in Christ Jesus, we are going to be redeemed, caught up, okay? I will tell you this, though. Christians certainly are going to be going through the Great Tribulation. Let's see, distinction. The Church of the Living God, we are not. Because what's a Christian? What's a Christian? I'm also sorry that you made that video too. And not being a man and sticking by your guns when you know it's the truth. And unfortunately, I know you watch my videos. Excuse me. I know you watch the videos that the Lord gives me to do. Oh, I deserve that. Because this is not mine. But I know, I know you still watch. Shame on you. But let's go now to 2 Thessalonians, okay? You have to rightly divide the word of truth, son, okay? What you are doing is not being rightly, you're not rightly dividing the word of truth, okay? Because if you do not rightly divide the word of truth, what does this verse say? A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. If you do not rightly divide the word of truth, God's going to be ashamed of you. The church of the living God is not going through the time of Jacob's trouble, son. And your little video, your short four-minute video, which unfortunately you were blinking like crazy, okay? Um, you left out a lot of stuff. And your comment section is littered with heresy. Especially that one gal who's talking, who's basically talking about the serpent seed doctrine. But let's continue this, okay? I said to verse 18, okay? But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Vain, profane and vain babblings. Profane. That the church of the living God is going to go through the time of Jacob's trouble and experience God's wrath. Profane. Vain. Preparing Christians for the great tribulation. Those who are truly saved are not going to be in that time. But there are going to be a multitude of Christians in that time. There are. But no one of the Church of the Living God is going to be their son. 
Okay? You need to be aware of this. Who's going to tell you this? Somebody got it. If I could have gotten a hold of you personally, I would have. Verse 17. And their word will eat as doth a canker, of whom is Hymenius and Philetus. Their word will eat as doth a canker. Their word. What word is that? Not rightly dividing the word of truth and teaching profane and vain babblings. Their word will eat as doth a canker, of whom is Hymenius and Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred. Error. Okay? Saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthrow the faith of some. So see, who concerning the truth have erred? Saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some? Okay? Now, these people who were mentioned by name, Hymenius and Philetus, their word, their word is what? They weren't studying to show themselves approved unto God. They weren't rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? God is ashamed of them. Also, they were promoting profane and vain babblings. Okay? Making people vain. And also teaching contrary to the truth of God. Okay? That's what happens when you don't rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? That's major doctrine. Dividing the word of truth. Yes, the entirety of scripture is written for us, but it is not written to us. You do greatly err, son. You do greatly err. Okay? And while we're here, let's read... Verse 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. Because when you come to the Lord on his terms and conditions, broken and contrite and fear of him, call upon his name, and he saves you, you are sealed until the day of redemption. Read Ephesians chapter 1 sometime, okay? Excellent discourse and scripture about it, okay? Eternal security, okay? So, having this seal, okay? Nevertheless, the foundation of God, and there is no other foundation that can be laid than that which is laid, and that is Jesus Christ, having, uh, stand sure, having this seal, that we are sealed until the day of redemption. The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. If you're not rightly dividing the word of truth, God is ashamed of you, and you're in iniquity. Okay? Okay? Son, I say that because I perceive you are much younger than I am. I'm almost 48 years of age, okay? But, um, you know, your video, you gave just a little bit of truth, and it was truth, but you left out some important things. You're not rightly dividing the word of truth, and your comment section is pro littered with profane heresy, boy. Oh, you need to fix that. I'm not going to comment on your video, even though I considered it. No, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to go there and start battles with your people who are commenting on your videos. That's your job. Okay? Second Thessalonians. Church of the Living God, we've been through this a plentitude of times. Okay? People who are not of us, watch. Okay? Bear with me. And remember... Remember the time that is coming and with whom our Lord is going to be dealing with. Our, we must decrease and he must increase. Our time is coming to an end, dear brethren. You know this. This is their time and the power of darkness. Our time is coming to an end. And when our time, this dispensation ends, the time of Jacob's trouble where God right now is dealing with, and Church of the Living God, you know this. Again, bear with me. Those who are not of us, watch. So bear with me, okay? When this dispensation ends, this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, because it's an amazing thing that God went and took us Gentiles and grafted us into the tree of the Jew. Going to be putting uh, two videos about replacement theology within this video uh, in the description box. Watch them, okay? 
But that's, that's the mystery that us Gentiles have been grafted in. The time where God is going to be dealing specifically with his people is rapidly approaching. And isn't it interesting that we're seeing a whole lot of people distracting you with things, idolizing certain things, idolizing men, being in the highest form of idolatry, okay? Also, we're seeing a lot of the yea hath God, Jesuit textual criticism people coming out of the woodwork. And of course, replacement theology up the wazoo. Beg your pardon for that phrase. Okay? And I, I, I got to tell you something. Okay? I got to tell you something. These black Hebrew Israelites... They are some of the worst replacement theology adherents you're ever going to come across. There is, it takes a miracle. It takes a profound miracle from our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, to save one of these horrific, arrogant, pompous devils, these black Hebrew Israelites, okay? If you're of Ham, it is impossible for you to be a Hebrew. It's impossible. If you are of Ham, it is impossible for you to be of Hebrew. If you are of Japheth, it is impossible for you to be a Hebrew. Okay? If you are of Shem, it is possible for you to be a Hebrew. But what is a Hebrew? A Hebrew is the direct chosen line that descends from Abraham, Isaac, and and Jacob, that specific line. That's why you have Asiatics, such as Japanese and Chinese, Korean, and that kind of stuff, which are of Shem, but they are not Hebrews, okay? Someone can be a Jew. <gasps> yes! Someone can be a Jew. But if you're of Ham, if you're of Japheth, it's impossible for you to be a Hebrew. Hence, black Hebrew Israelites, that's heresy, you bunch of lying, arrogant devils, okay? And those people are, they are some of the worst, okay? Muslims teach a variation of replacement theology, okay? They do. They've replaced Israel, okay? Because Muslims, they, they, they stem legitimately from the firstborn of Abraham. Yes, they do. But in Isaac, I see this call, okay? Catholics, Catholics. They are <laughs> replacement theology, okay? Their poison, Satan's poison, is what's messing everything up, okay? But then you have these black Hebrew Israelites, okay? Well, Esau are the white man. You guys are a bunch of wicked devils. You're heretics. And it is impossible for you to be a Hebrew, Okay? There's going to be links in the video, okay, about what is a Jew. If you're a black Hebrew Israelite, I, I implore you, I challenge you, watch the videos, okay? Oh, and by the way, if you're from England, you know, British, uh, you're not uh, Hebrew either, okay? You're not. So, anyway, sorry for that little rant and rabbit, okay? See, when you're not rightly dividing the word of truth, all hell breaks loose. Okay? All hell breaks loose. Big part, brother. Okay. Now, we had uh, done a expository video on 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 before, and there was an error that was in that video, and we also did a correction video, which is on Revelation chapter 13. Those videos will be within the description box, okay? That video on 2 Thessalonians is pretty spot on because of the Lord, but I made an error in it which was addressed and corrected in a video about the, an expository video on Revelation chapter 13. So see, I don't cover my mistakes. I let you see them and see how the Lord corrects. That's very important to do that. But they're going to be in the description box, okay? So we're not going to get too deep into this. So follow me along. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Again, Church of the Living God, please... Forgive me and bear with me, okay? We're not the, we are not the only ones that have anything to do with this kind of stuff. 
Others who are not. Others who think they are and are not. Watch. Okay? Those have to be addressed. Okay? So bear with me. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 on to verse 12. And young man, this is what you should have done. But you didn't. Okay? If you happen to see this video, young man, uh, uh, an email to get a hold of me is on this channel. Get a hold of me and let's talk. Okay? Because I would have rather have done this personally rather than do this. But the Lord had another idea. So anyway, enough. Let's go. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 under verse 12. Let no man deceive you by, the, by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And what is the falling away? Brethren, like I told you, bear with me. Okay? It's not all about us. It's not all about us. We must decrease and he must increase. Okay? What is the falling away? I'll tell you. 1 John chapter 2. Verses 18 and 19. Uh, 18 on verse 20. Excuse me. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come. And even now are there many Antichrists. Oh yeah, right now especially, yes. Whereby we know that it is the last time. What is the falling away? They went out from us. But they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye have an unction, unction, that seal, that gift of God himself, the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that spirit, okay? But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. Why? Because God knows all. We don't know everything. It's, uh, it is a uh, glory for the secret things belong unto the Lord, but it is the glory of kings to search out a matter, okay? God's not going to let us know everything. Okay. Unlike Mr. John MacArthur and Mr. Peter Ruckman, who knew everything, okay, but no, <laughs> no, all right? But the falling away is verse 19, okay, in, second, in 1 John chapter 2. Okay, read it again. They went out from us, but they were, not all, they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Go back to uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. So, let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. That's happening. And uh, the closer we get to the redemption of the purchased possession, those who you thought were of us for years and years and years and years and years and years. And years huh. Yeah. Money, 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 money. Mm -hmm. Anyway, enough. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, the appropriate title. A name for this coming one. Everyone calls him the Antichrist. The Antichrist does not appear in Scripture. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. <laughs> That's not fair. That's not fair. You can't because it's not in there. The Antichrist. The Antichrist is not in Scripture. I'm sorry. You can't because it's not in there. Okay? But that man of sin, the son of perdition, Inaccurately referred to as the Antichrist, okay? He is Antichrist, yes. But the Antichrist doesn't appear in Scripture, okay? Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God, okay? Making a reference onto the third rebuilt temple of which he's going to appear in. And you got to remember, brethren, this is Second Thessalonians. This is doctrine for us today. But Paul is making mention of something that is to come. And see, we have to remember, this dispensation is coming to an end. 
Have any of you of the Church of the Living God felt at least the slightest tug in your heart to witness onto some of the Jews? Even just, just the slightest? Because they're the ones who are going to go into that time. Have you had even the slightest tug at your heart strings to maybe go to a few of them? Or are you scared? <laughs> yeah. Let's see. That man of sin, the son of perdition, third rebuilt temple, he's going to go in there and he's going to look like the Roman Catholic Jesus. Okay, probably with the long hair and everything. Okay, probably with the blue eyes as far as I'm, as far as we know. And remember, Jesus Christ was not a Caucasian. He was Shemitic. Neither was he black. He wasn't white. Okay, he is Shemitic. Okay. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. Something is withholding. Okay, what is withholding? Verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let. Let means what? To stop, to hinder. Who's the he? Until he be taken out of the way. So, only he who now letteth. Who's the he? Until he, who's the he, be taken out of the way. Well, God. No, God is omnipresent. God is everywhere. God's not going anywhere. Okay. Church of the living God. Again, okay, relax. We know this. Okay, again, I have to state this. Okay. Those who are not of us are watching. Okay, so bear with me. The he who now letteth will let. It's not God. Okay, yes, God is withholding, but through something. What is that? Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. The he is the church of the living God, the body of Christ. Okay, that is the he that is being referred to in verse 7. Okay, because God's not going to be taken out of uh, anything. Okay, remember in the scriptures it says, uh, in one of the Psalms, if I descend into hell, thou art there. You ain't going to get away from God. He is omnipresent. He's everywhere. So he's not going to be taken out of the way. So who is? The church of the living God, the body of Christ. The redemption of the purchased possession. The catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. Erroneously disgustingly, erroneously referred to as the pre-tribulation rapture. If you know that word isn't in Scripture, then why do you keep referring to it? Oh! <clears throat> Verse 8. So, the He is the body of Christ, the church of the living God. The living God. Not, not the Christians. The Christians are going to go through the... the Great tribulation, yes, but the church of the living God is not going to go through the time of Jacob's trouble, dear friend. See, young man, this, this, this is what you weren't dealing with. Okay, you can't be concerned if you're if you're put into this position. You cannot be concerned for their time. Like, oh, I got to make such a short video because yes, people's attention span is the span of the, of a gnat. But if someone is being led by the Lord Jesus Christ, they're going to watch. That's the way it works, okay? And also, unfortunately, the enemies who hate Christ, they watch, okay? I know some of you do. I, I know a few of you um, actually will sit and watch every minute. I know that. Mm, weird, but anyway, so let's pick up at verse 8. And then... Shall that wicked, who is that wicked, that man of sin, son of perdition, that's uh, spoken of in verse 3, okay? And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Okay? And then. So what happens first? What happens first? What happens first? Okay, first, big your part, falling away. Long been happening. Now it's just getting more pronounced as we get closer, okay? Now it's just getting worse, okay? You watch. It's going to get even far worse before we get redeemed, dear brethren, okay? 
So, like in verse 3, falling away first has happened. Yes, it's happening. And that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Some like to say, well, it happens. Uh, uh, you know, first, we're going to see the son of perdition and then get... No. No, because why? That would contradict scripture right here. Okay? Paul's telling you, two things have to happen before the mark of the beast. Yes, son. Falling away, which is already happening. And that man of sin, the son of perdition, be revealed. And that cannot happen until we, who are saved of the church of the living God, get redeemed. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Okay? Even him, whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. Remember this verse, because we're going to hit back, and we're going to hit it again at some point in this video, I think. I think, yes, we are, okay? Remember this verse, okay? Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power, with all power and signs and lying wonders, okay? And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Today, in this dispensation, this is doctrine written for us today. Verse 10, yes, in the time of Jacob's trouble, the church of the living God is not there to give a witness on to the Jews. The two witnesses will be there. The 144,000 sealed, the only ones who will be sealed during that time period. They will be witnesses on to who? The Jews, the Hebrews. Okay? Today, verse 10, people want to believe a lie. So God will do what? Send them strong delusion, okay? During the time of Jacob's trouble, dear friend, church of the living God is not on the earth, and God's attention is specifically on the Jews, the Hebrews. Can a Gentile get saved in that time period? We're going to look at that. Yes, I believe so. I believe so. We're going to address that a little bit more here in a little bit, but let's continue, okay? Verse 11. And for this cause... God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Amen. This is what you talked about. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Okay? And of course, Romans chapter 1 talks about that as well. Okay? Okay? Let's see. Yes, son. Two things, two conditions have to be met before the mark of the beast. Okay? It's falling away, which has happened. And that man of sin, the son of perdition, be revealed. And that man of sin that is to be revealed isn't going to be revealed until the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? So, in reality, falling away, the catching away before the body of Christ, uh, before the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? The catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. I just prefer the redemption of the purchased possession because we're bought with his blood, Okay? And lastly, that man of sin, the son of perdition, be revealed. Okay? Okay? The in, permanent indwelling of the Holy Ghost and the Lord of that Spirit is not going to be available to everybody in the time of Jacob's trouble. It's going to be with those 144,000 Jews. Okay? Okay? Go to Ezekiel chapter 7. Okay? Ezekiel chapter 7. Not Jeremiah. Ezekiel 5, 6, 5, 6, 7. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 7, verses 9 on to verse 15. Our time is ending, brethren. Church of the living God, our time is coming to an end. Is the catching away going to happen this year? I don't know. I would not be surprised at all if it didn't happen this year, but we don't have that much time left, okay? We don't. And as we are continuing, we are seeing the falling away progress more and more, and all these heresies and all these heretics and people, these people wasting your time trying to divert your attention away from what is really happening. Like, I, like we talked about in some of the previous videos this week, distraction. They want to distract you about their idolatry. And I have the right to be a Catholic for a day. 
Bravo there. Bravo. Okay. Distraction. 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 Ezekiel chapter 7, verses 9 on to verse 15. And mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity. I will recompense thee according to thy ways, and thine abominations that are in the midst of thee, and yet shall and ye shall know that I am the Lord that smiteth. You look at the culture, at the society of the Jew, of the Hebrew in Germany, before the times of World War II, before the Holocaust. It's reminiscent to what they are doing today in their own homeland. Okay, their Talmud, their Kabbalistic uh, teachings, their worship of the rabbis, their four steel of the Jesuit poniards now. Okay, and remember this. See, you got to rightly divide the word of truth. This is doctrinally and dispensationally under the law. This is written to the Jew for the Jew. Okay, this is written for our instruction. And learning, Romans chapter 15, verse 4. Yes, but doctrinally, doctrinally, excuse me, <laughs> it's just written for the Jews, the Hebrews, okay? Israel today, right now today, does not know. They think they know, they think they do, but they don't. They don't know who God is. And see, we have been grafted in to shew them who their God is. And oh, and I know, I know from an actually saved, <laughs> born again Jew who is of the church of the living God, not a British man pretending to be one, okay? Um, the Jews, the Hebrews, they see what is Christianity. Even, even King James Bible believing Christianity, it's a joke to them. Christianity is a joke unto the Jew. Brother, ain't this true? You want nothing to do with the word Christian. Because look at what Christianity is. Remember, the Christians, they had the tunics with the crosses on it. Right? Verse 10. Behold the day. Behold it has come. The morning has gone forth, the rod hath blossomed, pride hath budded. Is that not obvious for today? <laughs> the rod hath blossomed, pride hath budded. Sure has, hasn't it? Yeah. Violence has risen up into a rod of wickedness. None of them shall remain nor of their multitude, nor of any of theirs. Neither shall there be wailing for them. The time has come. The day draweth near. Let not the buyer rejoice, nor the seller mourn. For wrath is upon all the multitude thereof. The time of Jacob's trouble is God's wrath. Okay? For the seller shall not return to that which is sold although they were yet alive. For the vision is touching the whole multitude thereof, which shall not return. Neither shall any, neither shall any strengthen himself in the iniquity of his life. All your false gods that you are worshiping, your idols that you have set up in your heart, let them save you during the time of your trouble. No, God mocks you for that. Okay? You don't know who God is. They have blown the trumpet, even to make already, but none goeth to the battle. For my wrath is upon all the multitude thereof. The sword is without, and the pestilence, and the famine within. He that is in the field shall die with the sword, and he that is in the city, famine and pestilence shall devour him. Some rough times are coming. Okay, this was fulfilled by Nebuchadnezzar and stuff like that, yes. But to think that this, as a prophecy, ends just with that? No. Go to Jeremiah chapter 30. Jeremiah chapter 30. 
Three X's if you are reading a facsimile copy of the authorized version. Three X's. Okay? Where are we? Jer Jeremiah chapter 30. Verses 5 on to verse 9. Actually, let's read four, uh, verse 4 on to verse 9. Okay? And these are the words that the Lord spake concerning Israel and concerning Judah. Now remember at this time, northern and southern kingdom. Israel, Judah. Okay, they were divided. Okay, but the totality of the, what we are looking at is for Israel in a whole. Okay, Israel, prince with God and man. Jacob, the one that has uh, took his brother by the heel. Is not Israel today behaving more like Jacob? And not truly as Israel? Hmm? Lord willing, the differences between Jacob and Israel will be addressed in another video coming in the future. We'll see, Lord willing. But, for thus saith the Lord, verse 5, We have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. And you got these people saying, peace, peace, and there is no peace. Ask ye now, and see, whether a man doth travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins, as a woman in travail? And all faces are turned into paleness? Alas, for that day is great. And you got these wicked Jesuitical textual critics. Well, a day in the Hebrew. Shut up. Go put your head in the toilet and flush it. Okay? Wicked Jesuits. Okay? Alas, for that day is great. So that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. The great tribulation does not appear in scripture. The time of Jacob's trouble. Daniel's 70th week, okay, the time of Jacob's trouble. It's the only time this is referenced, but this time is referenced to a lot. Okay, so, and people are like, well, why doesn't Paul mention it? Well, Paul is the apostle unto who? The Gentiles for this dispensation, okay? As Peter was the apostle unto the circumcision, the Jews, the Hebrews, okay? And it's for the Jews, okay? This dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, us Gentiles, the mystery, the mystery is that us Gentiles have been grafted into their tree. That's, that's what Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 and verse 6 are about, okay? Read that, by the way, in your own time. But let's continue. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. Comfort, but he shall be saved out of it. Yes, when Jewry, in, it, in its totality, through the 144,000, through the two witnesses, Moses and Elijah, when Jewry, at some point, Jewry, during the time of Jacob's trouble, is going to get it. And they're going to realize that, oh, the Church of the Living God, reading from the authorized version of the Scriptures, they were the ones telling us the truth all along. They, they weren't these Christians who bickered over heresy and idolatry. Okay? No, these weren't Christians like you saw on TV saying your best life now. No, these weren't Christians who worship buildings. No, the Church of the Living God, reading from the scriptures, were telling us the truth all along. At some point during the time of Jacob's trouble, I personally believe when they see the Roman Catholic Jesus in their third rebuilt temple, I personally believe that's when they're like, uh-oh. <laughs> right, brother? Oy vey, right? Oy vey, wow, we missed it. Okay? Verse 8. For it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck and will burst thy and burst thy bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. But they shall serve the Lord their God, and David their king, whom I will raise up unto them, our Lord Jesus Christ, king of the Jews, son of David, meaning his kingship. Okay? So, 
Our time is ending, brethren. This dispensation is coming to a rapid end. When? I don't know. Nobody does. He could call us up at any time now. Things are in place to do so. Don't believe these uh, people who say, oh, they couldn't get the temple built in that guy. Shut up. Jewelry backed by that man of sin, the son of perdition, and the wealth of Roman Catholicism? You crazy boy! They'll get that thing up like nothing. Especially with the deep pockets of the Vatican. Come on now. Come on now. You should know better. Of all people. You should know better, okay? Now, we're seeing so much people today preaching heresy and not rightly dividing the word of truth. Or they say they are rightly dividing the word of truth, but it's faith alone from, from Genesis unto Revelation. Okay? These guys, these hyper-dispensationalists, the, you know, the just believe people, these filthy devils, okay? They're, they're not, why are you guys calling yourself dispensational if the way you're saved, according to you, is one way you're only saved from beginning to end? That, that doesn't make sense. We're seeing a rampant amount of not rightly dividing the word of truth, being non-dispensational. Okay, the new IFB guys who basically preach the same gospel that the easy believism guys preach. Okay, faith alone, just believe. Okay, <laughs> all right, but we're seeing that that's just, and especially with the Jesuitical uh, textual critics that come out there, the yea hath God said people. Okay, uh. but the replacement theology. Like we addressed earlier, those these black Hebrew Israelites, okay? You can call me a uh, racist if you wish, okay? The fact is, if you descend from Ham, the fact is, if you descend from Japheth, it is impossible for you to be a Hebrew, okay? It's impossible. Someone of Shem... Obviously, it could be a Hebrew, but they have to be descended from that specific chosen line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And on to the Muslim. Yes, you descend from Ishmael, the firstborn, yes, but in Isaac, his seed is called. Not in Ishmael, okay? But we see, we're seeing, and especially, like I said, these, these black Hebrew Israelites, um, I've witnessed the Catholics, okay? I have witnessed, I have, I have witnessed onto Catholics before. They're really, they're very difficult to witness onto because they, they think that they serve the same God that we have, the Church of the Living God do. <laughs> oh boy, are they wrong! But a lot of Catholics even will at, at least engage with you. But what happens with a Catholic, uh, I'll give you an example of this. Go to Acts chapter 22. Acts chapter 22. That's two X's and two I's if you have the 1611 facsimile copy, okay? That's two X's and two I's, okay? But Acts chapter 22, verses 22 under verse 23, okay? Paul, the apostle to the Gentiles, when speaking on to his own uh, people, the Jews, the Hebrews, about how he went on to the Gentiles and stuff like that. He was giving his testimony before his people, okay? Acts chapter 22, we want verses 22 and 23. And a Catholic you can speak to, but when you start talking to them about how their Pope Sosa, it's like the Pope is uh, Francis. No, the black Pope, the true leader of all Catholicism today is Arturo Sosa, the black Pope, okay? Francis... Francis is a Jesuit, and the Jesuit is subservient unto the superior general. So Francis is a puppet boy to Arturo Sosa. You tell a Catholic that, number one, uh, their, their Mary is Semiramis, the queen goddess of Babylonia, okay? Uh, that they have no assurance of salvation, that works salvation, and that their pope is Antichrist. And that their system is uh, talked about in Revelation chapter 17. And you have to with the Catholic. You can't avoid that because we don't worship the same God. They're lost. Catholics worship flesh. 
just like their daddy, Satan, does. Because Satan savors the things that be of men, not of God. So a Catholic is all about flesh. And you tell the truth unto a Catholic, at first they will engage you politely, but when you have to, you have to. You tell the truth. That's how you show love, by telling the truth. You tell the truth unto a Catholic, what happens? Verse 22 and 23 in Acts chapter 22. And they gave him audience unto this word. And oh, this has happened to me. And then lift up, and then lift up their voices and said, Away with such a fellow from the earth, for it is not fit for fit that he should live. All right? As I have received death threats from the Jesuits. Yeah. Yeah. You speak against Mystery Babylon the Great and warn her people the truth of their satanic system. <laughs> yeah. Away with such a fellow from the earth. Kill him. Kill him. For it is not fit that he should live. This is what happens when you tell the truth unto, so far, every Catholic that I've ever had the privilege to witness to. Okay? In verse 23. And they cried out and cast off their clothes and threw dust in the air. They made a big, big, big stink about it. And then what happens? Uh, verse 24. The chief captain commanded him to be... Uh, the chief captain commanded him to be brought into the castle and bade that he should be examined by scourging, that he might know, therefore, that he might know wherefore they cried so against him. So Paul had to be rescued from his people because they were going to kill him because he was telling them the truth. Um, you tell a Catholic the truth. Uh, I've, I've, I've seen it. They're sweet, just like, just like someone else I know of. They're usually so sweet and so demure and so soft. You tell them the truth and expose them as Catholic heretics that they are or tell them the truth about their system. Whoo, boy, they want to kill you just that quickly. Okay? Muslims. I have talked to Muslims. Even Muslims who knew that I despise their religion, what they believe. Okay? I've been able to have discourse face to face. The Muslims that I've run into online here, that's a different story. But mano a mano is different. Jews will at least hear you, oh, you poor little goyim. You think you're going to tell me about my God? Yeah, and you tell them the truth, and some of them will spit right before your eyes. But see, these black Hebrew Israelites, I, I've seen it. I don't, I don't mess with them. I don't mess with them. If, if you come here, the, the most I would ever do is give them a link to the videos about what is a Jew and leave it at that, okay? Because the, the black Hebrew Israelites, they, they, wow. Catholics are really difficult to witness onto. The black Hebrew Israelites, it takes a miracle. You go along now, uh, Esau, okay? Uh, I'm educated and blah, 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 or you're Esau, you're a white person. Those, I pity the black Hebrew Israelites. I really do. I really do. And and here, here we go. Go to Revelation chapter 2. Okay, Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. We want verses 8... On to verse 11. Revelation chapter 2, verses 8 on to verse 11. And on to the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are of the synagogue of Satan. And as we have discussed before, Church of the Living God, the videos will be for you to look at. What is a Jew? Okay, Scripturally, a Jew is a reference onto a Hebrew. Now, within the Old Testament, we talk about this in, that vi in those videos, someone who is not of the Hebrews can become a Jew. Today, yes, you can become a Jew. Yes, you can, but you can't be a Hebrew. Okay, And in Scripture, Hebrew, Jew, when you see Jew, it's a reference unto the Hebrew. Because unto the Hebrew, the Jew, were given the law, the ordinances of God, okay? We, we talk about that in depth in those two videos. What is a Jew, okay? Okay? But so, 
There are those out there claiming to be Jews and are not and of the synagogue of Satan. Now these Jesuit infiltrators and coadjutors like to take this and say that it is the actual Jews. But no, no, it's the Jesuits, okay? Black Hebrew Israelites. Black, black Hebrew Israelites, that's impossible. You cannot be descended of Ham and be a Hebrew. It's impossible. You cannot be a descendant of Japheth and be a Hebrew. It's impossible. You can you can be a Jew. You can you know you can don the fedora. You can wear the uh, the little kippah and stuff like that and uh, put that thing on your forehead. You can be a Jew, sure, but you can't be a Hebrew. You can't be a Hebrew. And remember, scripturally, scripturally, we prove this in those two videos. Scripturally, when it speaks of a Jew, it's making always reference onto a Hebrew. Okay, there are exceptions, excuse me. There are certain places like in Esther and in Jonah, uh, Esther. Many became Jews because of the fear of Mordecai. Okay, Gentiles joined themselves onto the Jews, but they weren't Hebrews, okay? They weren't Hebrews. The black Hebrew Israelites saying they are Jews and they're not. Catholics, they don't say we are Jews, but they sure teach replacement theology. They are the authors of, re, of replacement theology. Okay? Muslims, they would, they would rather cut off their own tongue than uh, have any association with the Hebrew, the Jew themselves. But they teach a variation of replacement theology. Okay? I know that works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of, their, of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are of the synagogue of Satan. My dear, my dear friend, you know, you know who you are, who pretended to be Jew, okay? Who are of the synagogue of Satan, Catholicism. You know what you did? Even that one channel that's written in all Hebrew letters. Um, never mind. You're hopeless. Never mind. Let's, uh, let's read on to verse 11, okay? Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of, the, some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. He that hath an ear to hear. He that hath an ear, excuse me, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto, this, unto the churches. He that over overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. And of course, here in Revelation chapter 3, uh, verses 7 on to verse 13. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. I know thy works. <laughs> Very quickly about verse 7. Yeah, if this counsel or work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, you're not going to stop it. Okay? I know thy works. Behold, I have set, a, a, set before thee an open door. A door that you didn't boot, by the way. <laughs> okay? Uh, I have set before thee an open door. And no man can shut it. Yeah. Boot the door open because it's been shut onto you. Because you're lost. Yeah. Yeah, boot the door. So someone who is intelli as intelligent as you are, that was pretty stupid. <laughs> okay. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan. It's not Jews. Synagogue of Satan. Catholicism. The church has replaced the Jew. According to Catholicism, okay? It's not the time of Jacob's trouble, no. It's the time of church, the church's trouble to purify the bride for the coming of the son of perdition, okay? It's talking about Catholicism. Synagogue of Satan, okay? Okay. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. All you black Hebrew Israelites, you need to beware. You need to beware. But then again, kind of like a certain individual, pretty much you are hopeless. It's going to take a miracle. because I've seen it. I've seen it. 
it, it's going to take a miracle for the, some of those people. And that's exactly what salvation is, a miracle. Okay? Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. He that overcometh, Will I make will I will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. So see right now, brethren. Right now, we are seeing a, pl a, a plethora of those who we thought were of us. They're being made manifest that, guess what? They ain't all of us. And they're going out. They're idolaters. They're idolaters. Okay? That's what they are. They are idolaters. Oh, and incidentally, uh, I made a reference about the Second Thessalonians expository video and the correction. It, the correction was actually in Revelation chapter uh, uh, chapter twelve that we did it, not verse thir uh, chapter thirteen. Okay, but see, in the, in this video that I made mention of, in the comments section, there, there's a gal talking about the serpent seed doctrine. Okay, that Satan and Lucifer are two different beings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hath God said? Satan and Lucifer, two... No, they're one and the same. Like Al Pacino in that disgusting movie, The Devil's Advocate. There are so many names. No. Satan is what? The accuser of the brethren. Light. Uh, Lucifer. Son of the morning. Morning Star is the title of our Lord Jesus Christ. Young man, that wicked woman in your comment section, write in, write in that comment called Lucifer the Morning Star. Young man, if you're saved, you need to get your head out your buttocks and wake up. You need to rightly divide the word of truth. You need to get the, the authorized version of the scriptures. You need to rightly divide the word of truth. You can't let that kind of heresy go on in your comment section like that, man. Okay? And that that one person, um, well, in the Greek, hand doesn't necessarily mean right hand, but whatever the... Yea, hath God said? That's Genesis 3, verses 1 through 5. Right there. That's Jesuit. Okay? That's Jesuit. Okay? Serpent seed dry duck. That's absurd. Satan and Lucifer are two different things? <laughs> two different entities? No. Lucifer, son of the morning, who is also Satan, the accuser of the brethren. You need to pay attention, young man. Revelation chapter 13, okay? Now, we are going to read this entire chapter. We're not going to have a deep expository on it, okay? But we're going to read this, okay? Because, see, brethren, what is happening now? The falling away, people getting your attention diverted from the truth and seeing what is actually going on, that people are falling away. It's been for a long time, but it's getting worse. And also with the replacement theology, and the distractions with war, with Putin, and those poor people in Ukraine. That's horrible. But what are they doing under behind the scenes? Distracting us. Okay? Why? For what is coming. First of all, we have to remember, rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? It's going to be a falling away and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. But something happens. Okay, he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Okay, that is the body of Christ get redeemed before the time of Jacob's trouble. And after we, the church of the living God, the body of Christ be redeemed, then 
that man of sin, the son of perdition, be revealed. We, the church of the living God, are not going to see that man of sin, the son of perdition. I believe he is alive today. Yes, I do. Okay? But that's beside the point. You Christians, you're going to see him. You're going to see him. Because uh, let's, let's remember one thing. Okay? I, for a while, thought that the book of Revelation was not in chronological order. Okay? Like the events. For example, in the book of Judges, um, there is evidence that suggests that chronologically in the events that are described within the book are not within chronological order. Okay? I used to for a while. That was one of the corrections that the Lord corrected me publicly on with the Second Thessalonians uh, uh, chapter 2 expository video and the correction video that came from that, the expository video on Revelation chapter 12. Uh, yeah, obviously, the book of Revelation is within chronological order within the events it happens, okay? It is, all right? So you got to remember this. There's something significant that happens in Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. After this, I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the, verse, and the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither! Come up. You know, come up. Redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? First Corinthians chapter 15. First Thessalonians chapter 4. Okay? Ephesians chapter 1. Okay? Okay? There's many incidences within the Pauline epistles where Paul talks about the catching away of the body of Christ, the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? But come up hither. Okay? What is this? This is the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? This is the catching away. Disgustingly, nauseatingly referred to as the pre-tribulation rapture. Okay? Nauseatingly referred to as. It's the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? So, falling away, we get redeemed, and then you see, what was that in Revelation chapter 6? Right? What is that? Uh, Revelation chapter 6 about the um, the rider on the white horse, right? Yes, and he went forth conquering to conquer. Yes, in Revelation chapter 6. So the redemption of the purchased possession, the catching away, as we looked at in uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, happens in Revelation chapter 4, verse 1, and then in Revelation chapter 6, that man of sin, the son of perdition, goes forth, conquering to conquer. Okay? So yeah, there are things that have to happen before the mark of the beast. Okay? So remember that. Remember that. The church of the living God is not on the earth for this happening. Okay? Get that through your head. Rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? Christians. Christians probably aren't even going to be here either. But we're going to talk on that uh, a little bit more, okay? But let's let's read this, okay? Let's read this. Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13, okay? Revelation chapter 13. I'm looking at my notes here. Just looking at my notes here, okay? Okay, Revelation chapter 13. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, and his seat, and, a, and great authority. So the dragon and the beast, that's two. Hmm. That's two. The dragon, that old serpent, the devil, Satan, okay? Lucifer, one and the same, okay? And the beast, the beast, that man of sin, the son of perdition. Hmm. Let's continue. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. Okay, 
Because the church of the living God is not going to be there. He who now lives will let. The whole world is going to be like, oh, wow. With those lying signs and wonders. Huh? Remember? Remember I told you to remember 2 Thessalonians uh, chapter 2, verse 9? Okay, remember I told you that. Okay, let's continue. Let's continue, okay? And they worship the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. The dragon is Satan. People are going to be worshiping Satan during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? And blaspheme... Uh, and, wait, wait, wait. And they worship the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worship the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to mar make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. That's three and a half years. Okay? That's why I believe, midway during the time of Jacob's trouble, that, that man of sin, the son of perdition, this guy that's being referenced to, who's going to look like the Catholic Jesus, is going to go into that third rebuilt temple and say, I am God, and he's going to look like the Roman Catholic Jesus. Okay? That's when I believe the Jews are going to be like, uh-oh. Okay? Let's continue. And he opened his mouth in blasphemies, in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell therein. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. Who are the saints? The Jews. See, this dispensation, saints, because remember, this is a different, this, the book of Revelation is for the time of Jacob's trouble, just as is the book of Hebrews and the book of James, okay? When the Jews get it, they're going to go to the book of Hebrews and they're going to go to the book of James because the doctrine that is within the Pauline epistles is not going to apply during the time of Jacob's trouble. And you got people, young man, this you didn't say any of this, but this is what you are leading into, that people are going to be able to take the mark of the beast during the time of Jacob's trouble and be okay? Well, it, the, the Greek doesn't necessarily mean the right hand. Yea, hath God said? you got to be careful, young man. But let's continue, okay? Saints, in this dispensation, it's not Jew and Gentile. It's the Jews. Okay? And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Kindreds, tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. We did a video on the, the books, okay? I'll, if I remember, I'll put it in the description. Okay, write it down. Don't forget. I'll put it in the description box again. Three books, okay? All right. Okay, I lost my place, okay. Verse 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith, faith of the saints. Verse 11. Verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake like a dragon. So, okay, okay. In verse 2, we have the dragon and the beast. And we have here, in verse 11, another beast. Well, did the other one die? No. That makes three, doesn't it? Sure does. Hold on. But looking at verse 11, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, that makes three. Father, Son, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Oh! Could that be the Trinity? More on that in a second. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Dragons speak. How do dragons speak? Well, there's this one guy I know of. 
Uh, one of his channels, Mr. Nobody, uh, Second John, verse 9 and 11, used to have a channel named uh, Boot the Door. Uh, what is that one that's written in Hebrew? And uh, <laughs> and all kinds. Of, and uh, Pope Brian Denlinger. Um, devils speak. How do devils speak? Hmm. Perfect example. You're a perfect example. Well, how do how devils speak? How do dragons speak? Let's look at this. Psalm 55. Psalm 55. Oh, boy. Hold on. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. I had to remember uh, which was uh, 55 in Roman numeral, okay? How do dragons speak? Psalm 55, verse 21. Psalm 55, verse 21. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. Yeah, the uh, individual I'm referring to, you hear him, he talks so sweet, so innocent, so lovely sounding. <laughs> but war is in his heart, and his words are drawn swords. That's how a dragon speaks. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 23. Now that is two X's. I'm saying this also for myself. Two X's and three I's, okay? Proverbs 23, verses 6 and 8. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter, not Isaiah, Brad. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 23, verses 6 and 8. Eat, not thou, eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye, neither desire his dainty meats. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. Ooh. So a dragon speaks soft words, beautiful words, but war is in his heart, and his words are like drawn swords. And he, he's, he wants to give to you, give you all kinds of affection, but his heart is not with thee. Hmm. And of course, Isaiah, Isaiah, this is why I got messed up with this. Um, where, where was that? Isaiah, oh, chapter 30, chapter 30. Beg your pardon, I had to think of it. Isaiah chapter 30. Ah. Uh, Verses 8 on to verse 11. How dragons speak. Now go right up before them in a table and note it in a book that it may be for the time to come forever. Isaiah 30 verses 8 on to verse 11. That this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits. How does a dragon speak? Dragon, the devil, Satan, smoothly, softly. Oh, oh, we love you. Oh, so, so calm, so poised. But their heart is wicked. Their words are as drawn swords. Heart's not with thee. And the people love to have it so. People today, brethren, want to hear dragons, devils speaking out to them with their soft words, their kind, smooth speeches. People want that. This is in the, Isaiah 30, verses 8 on to verse 11. It's indicative to right now, as we already looked at in 2 Thessalonians. God shall send them strong delusion. Because why? They want to hear smooth things. They don't want to hear the truth. Get, you, get ye out of the way. Turn aside out of the past path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. So what do people do? They go to seek dragons. So dragons can speak unto them. Okay? And of course, we, 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 gotta, we gotta beat this horse a little, okay? We have to beat this horse a little. Romans chapter 16. Okay. Yes, this horse is going to be bludgeoned. Okay, we have to. 
Romans chapter 16, verses 17 and 18. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. And the doctrines that some of these people who have caused divisions, they're getting their doctrines from men and the traditions of men, not from God. Okay? For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, you know, flesh. Okay? And by good words and fair speeches, dragons speak, mm, deceive the hearts of the simple. That's a, that's a dragon speaking for you. <laughs> uh, the individual I made uh, mention to, uh, Second John, what is it? What's your channel there? Second John 9, verse 9 and 11, KJV, Mr. Nobody. <laughs> You'll wait. Your stuff written in Hebrew. <laughs> uh, uh, put in accountable KJV. Go down. You'll see the, the little pet monkey. And you'll see one of his videos pop up. Uh, thoughts on. That's the video. Thoughts on uh, accountable KJV. You'll hear him speaking so sweetly and so softly. Dragon speak. That's how a dragon speaks. Okay. Um, uh, we want Second Peter now. Second Peter chapter 2. Verses 18 and 19. How do dragons speak? Devils speak. How do dragons speak? Uh, second, uh, second Peter chapter 2, verses 18 and 19. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they are lower through the lusts of the flesh. Yeah. Through much wantonness, those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. <laughs> <laughs> While they promised them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same he is brought into bondage. And you can check out uh, Romans chapter 6, verse 16, 13. Yeah, verse 16 it is, I believe it is. Okay? Romans 6, 16. Okay? This is how a dragon speaks. Not... Vulgarly, or right? no, they're always smooth. Never have anything bad to say. That's why I don't trust David Daniels. That guy only gets mad at people who can't think for themselves. So, and also we're gonna, like I said, we're we are going to beat this horse, bludgeoned, bludgeoned, and this is the last time we're gonna hit this horse and continue. Okay, Jude sixteen. Jude doesn't have chapters. Jude, verse 16. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. Young man, I have to say this to you at the end of your video. You are asking for things. There's nothing wrong for, with asking for prayer. You ask the Lord for those things. Young man, look at me. If you're watching this, you make it this far, you're watching this. This is not a job. Like Leonard Ravenhill said, preaching is not a profession, it's a passion. Are you passionate just to get just to get this? Son, come on now. Come on now. Okay. Back to Revelation chapter 13, looking at verse 11 again. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And dragons speak smooth things. Don't you? Dr dragon speak. Hence, devil speak. I'm going to coin that from now on. Dragon speak. Yeah. Let's continue with verse 12. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was here healed. So now, hold on. 
With verse 2 and verse 12, we see three entities, don't we? We see the dragon, the beast, and we see another beast. What is this? What is this? Let's look. Revelation chapter 16. Revelation chapter 16. Revelation chapter 16. We want verses 13 and 15. Okay? Revelation chapter 16, verses 13 and 15, on to verse 15. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. The dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. That is the other beast that came out that we are looking at here in Revelation chapter 13. This is the other beast. This is the false prophet. So you have the dragon, God the Father, the beast, God the Son, and the false prophet, God the Holy Ghost. Oh, blasphemy, shut up. Shut up. The Trinity is satanic heresy. It is Babylonian, it is Egyptian, and it is Roman Catholic. You look into the history of Roman Catholicism, of the Catholic Church, what they, the first thing they started hammering home to people, God in three persons. Let's continue. Let's continue, okay? Where are we? In Revelation 16, verse 14. For they, for they are the spirit of devils, oh, working miracles, which go forth unto to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he lest he walketh, lest he walk naked, and they see his shame. Remember 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9, lying signs and wonders? So you have the dragon, you have the beast, and you have the false prophet. The Babylonian, Egyptian, Catholic, satanic. I spit on the Trinity because it's of Satan. Take offense and take a gate. And don't let the gate hit you in the buttocks on the way out. Okay? I hate every false way. I hate the Trinity because the Trinity is not scriptural. The Trinity is satanic. Hey, you Trinitarians, there's your Trinity right there. The dragon, who is Satan, the false prophet, or the, the beast, that man of sin, the son of perdition, and the false prophet. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. There's your Trinity. The Trinity is satanic, people. While I might not have certain love for a certain individual, uh, teaching about the Godhead is uh, right on. Can't deny that. Why? Because the Godhead is scriptural. The Trinity is satanic. The Trinity is satanic. Okay? Okay? Let's continue in Revelation chapter 13. Picking up at verse 13. And he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of all men. Kind of like Elijah did. Okay? This is the false prophet. Okay? And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And look at the Catholic Jesus. Okay, Jesus came off of the cross, by the way. Okay, the wound. <clears throat> that man of sin, the son of perdition, he's going to look, I'm telling you, I believe he's going to look like the Roman Catholic Jesus. He's going to get his wound by a sword. <clears throat> Verse 15, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Now, Ken Hovind said, you had to do three things to constitute worship of the beast. Ken Hovind, a Jesuit. Ken Hovind. Okay, Ken Hovind, a Jesuit. Yeah. 
Verse 16. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, doesn't matter, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Now, whether it's... We don't know exactly what the mark of the beast is. I believe that the steel of the Jesuit poniard does have something to do with it, but the steel of the Jesuit poniard is not the mark of the beast. No, it is not. But I believe that's going to be a vehicle of some sort. You know, inject it, you know, or surgery, okay? But the mark of the beast, that no man might buy or sell, save who? Save those who had the mark of the beast. Let's continue. Verse 16. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And Ken Hoven says, you can have one of those, but you have to have all three of those. But that's a lie. Don't believe Kent Hovind. Don't believe saying someone, well, like in the comment section of that video I'm referring to. Uh, well, in the right hand doesn't mean in the Greek, yea, hath God said. That's someone who is trying to uh, convince you that when you go, you Christian, you go into the time of Jacob's trouble, you can take the mark of the beast and okay. No. No. Yea, hath God said. You take the mark. You're doing all three of those things. It's not that you can do one or two of them and get away with it. You got to do it. No, you take the mark of the beast. You're worshiping the beast. Okay? And, and see, you got these easy believers and devils, faith alone. Okay? Preparing you people for the mark of the beast. Okay? You Christians that are going to be left behind who are not of the church of the living God. Okay? There's hope for you, Christians who get left behind. We're going to look at that here in a minute. There is hope for you. But, you know, these Christians, these easy believism devils, they're preparing you people to go into the time of Jacob's trouble and what they're just believe. You, you got to take the mark of the beast. You got, excuse me, you got to take that mark. You, you got, you want to eat, right? It, it's okay. You're not doing these three things. You can do it. Hey, remember, like Mr. Breaker says, and Mr. Kim, you can cut off your hand and gouge it out of your head. Go ahead, take it. No. You take that mark, you're done. You take that mark, you're doing all three. You get it. That's why you got to watch out, especially with these who went out from us, but they're not of us, preaching the okayness with idolatry. Paganism. Be careful of these people, brethren. And you too, you lost people. Watch out. Paganism ain't okay. Idolatry ain't okay. Verse 17. And that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number number of his name. You have the mark. You have all three of those. Verse 17 is, is, is it's almost as if our Lord in verse 17 is like, okay, there's going to be guys saying you have to do it. No, it doesn't matter. You take the mark of the beast. You're doing all three of those anyway. Okay. It's like our Lord is combating the ones who are saying today you have to do all three of those things to, to uh, be damned. Uh, you can do two of them and get away with it. You can do one of them and get away with it. You do all three. No, you take, you take the thing at all. You're done. Verse 18. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six, 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 World Wide Web, www, okay? Okay? So we're seeing replacement theology being ramped up, okay? Textual, yea, hath God said, Jesuit criticism, okay? That thing about the mark in the, well, in the Greek is, dude, shut up! Shut up. And then the serpent seed doctrine. Satan and Lucifer. They're two different things working for the devil. 
this, this is what we're dealing with, people, brethren. This is their hour and the power of darkness. We must decrease and he must increase. Okay. We have to address now. We have to address in uh, Revelation chapter 9. Revelation chapter 9. Or is it Revelation chapter 7? Hold on, let me check. Sorry about that, I had to check. This is impromptu, by the way, if you haven't noticed. Okay? Revelation chapter 7. Now, Revelation chapter 7 bloop, is after what? Revelation chapter 6, when that man of sin, the son of perdition, is released. Okay? Is uh, uh, turned loose on the world. And the lamb is the one who sets him loose. Okay? You read Revelation chapter 6. Okay? When that man of sin, the son of perdition, going forth conquering and to conquer, is going to be an imitation, okay? He's going to look like the Roman Catholic Jesus, okay? But see, in Revelation chapter 7, after the 144,000 Jews, Hebrews, are saved, sealed, okay? They're the only ones who are going to be sealed in this time period. When that man of sin, the son of perdition, is released, in Revelation chapter 6. There are Christians who think they are of the church of the living God who are going to be left behind. And then when we, the church of the living God, get redeemed, okay, these Christians who are left behind, these easy believism devil people primarily, I believe, and some of these, also these King James Bible believing Christians who are going to get left behind, they're going to be like, uh-oh, uh-oh. Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 on to verse 12. Uh, Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 on to verse 12. After this, after what? The 144,000 Jews being sealed. I beheld and lo, a great multitude which no man could not number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. So of every of all nations, kindreds, peoples, and tongues. But this is the time of Jacob's trouble. What's going on here? Keep reading. And cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and the four beasts and fell and fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. We have to read to verse um, uh, 15. Okay, let's continue to verse 15. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, what are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? You're wondering that yourself. Because it's like, well, wait, it's the time of Jacob's trouble. It's for the Hebrews. It's for the Jews. What about all these guys? This is right after the uh, releasing of that man of sin, the son of perdition on the earth. Okay, After the redemption of the purchased possession. There are going to be a lot of Christians. There are going to be a lot of King James Bible-believing Christians who are going to be left behind. And the King James Bible-believing Christians are going to be better off at this time than you easy believism devil who, devils who, you know, just believe and with your Bibles, okay? But when the son of perdition is released, those Christians are going to realize, uh-oh, uh oh, dum da dum dum. We done missed it. We missed catching away. Something's wrong. I believe here in Revelation chapter seven. Well, let, let's let's continue. Okay. Uh, verse thirteen. One of the elders asks John about you know it's like what about all these guys. 
They're of all different nations, but this is the time of trouble. What's going on? This elder asked kind of rhetorically. Okay, verse 14. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. It's like, you know. Why are you asking me for? What, what's the mystery? And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation. Show me the word the there. Show me the word the there. The great tribulation, the great tribulation, does not appear in scripture. There's no the, okay? Thank you very little, okay? These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their bloods, washed their robes, excuse me, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he will, and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. Hmm. Wash their uh, blood, wash their robe, ah. And have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Hmm. When that man of sin, the son of perdition, is re uh, revealed, these Christians that get left behind are going to realize, oh, wow, we missed it. Christians who say that uh, Christians are going through the Great Tribulation. Christians who say they are, but they are not of the Church of the Living God. That Those people that get left behind immediately, okay, they're going to be witnessing. It's like, hey, this, see, th this, this is what this is talking about. And then that man of sin who's going to go forth conquering and to conquer, <laughs> going to kill him. It's going to be a lot of death, okay? So you Christians who get left behind, your only hope is that you are part of this great multitude who die for your faith when you realize that you've messed up and that you've blown it. Like Esau, okay? Like Esau, who wept and cried, but there was no place for repentance. Why? Because you missed the redemption of the calf, of the purchased possession. But your only hope is, you, you uh, young whippersnappers who worship men and idols, okay? When you get left behind, you know the truth. But see, you're purposely today speaking against it for whatever pathetic reason you have. When we get redeemed and caught up and you're left behind, your only hope is to truly be converted and remember here in Revelation chapter 7. And hopefully you will be spared what's coming because it is the time of the Jews. So, with Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 on to verse 15, I believe, yes, 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 I believe, yes, that there will be, because you read elsewhere in the book of Revelation that they were beheaded for the testimony of Jesus, okay? But that was, again, talking about something different. But a great multitude gets saved right away at the beginning parts of the time of Jacob's trouble. It's going to be those Christians that get left behind and like, likewise realize, oh, wow, Oh, yeah, there really was a pre-tribulation rapture, okay? Oh, boy, yeah, we had to rightly divide the word of truth. Oh, boy, all those people that we were uh, attacking for because the Vatican said for us to do so, and they lined our pocketbooks really good. Oh, wow, this is real. We need to do something about this. Your only hope is that you're part of this great multitude, okay? That's your only hope. You Christians that get left behind, because you're not, you Christians that get left behind, you're not going to last, because it's the time of Jacob's trouble, not the time of the church's trouble, okay? Now, let's go to Revelation chapter 14, okay? Revelation chapter 14. You take the mark of the beast. You are, you are. Uh, what is that? Is that no man might buy a sale? Uh, you are worshiping the, the you are worshiping the beast. Okay, the minute you take that mark, you know it's not you have to do all three things. No, the minute you take the mark of the beast, you're worshiping the beast, and that's going to affect your mind against God. Okay, I believe because look at the steel of the Jesuit poniard with their uh, fun vax. VMAT2 inhibitors that affects the pineal gland, okay? You take the mark of the beast, you're done for. 
And then these textual critics that say, well, in the Greek, the hand, see, a person like that, young man, they're going to be left behind. Are you going to be left behind? I hope not. I hope not. But you got these people, that, that lady with the serpent seed doctrine. Yea, hath God said. Those are the ones who are going to be left behind. Okay? And those are the ones, if there's any hope for them, that they might um, repent really quickly at the beginning parts of the time of Jacob's trouble and that man of sin just kills them all. Okay? That's their only hope. Because during this dispensation, it's faith and works. And so you got the easy believers in people, like everybody's favorite YouTube Jesuit, and all the people associated with his group. Uh-uh-uh. Yeah? Okay? You got those guys who say, just believe from Genesis on to Revelation, which is not true. And you got those guys going to be telling these people during this time period, just believe. You're, you're eternally secure. Take the mark. You're not doing the three things. You're not worshiping or doing this, this. No, no. You can do two things and get away with it. Hey, remember, Mr. Breaker, Mr. Kim, chop off your hand. Cut it. No. No. Revelation chapter 14, verses 8, on to verse 11. This is very serious. And you need to re recognize the seriousness of the situations. Okay, young man, you really do. And all of you. All of you. Revelation chapter 14, verses 8 on to verse 11. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, Rome. Oh, it's actual like Mr. Henry Morris in his study Bible. No, it's Rome. Yea, hath God said. See, that is being coming out, being more pronounced daily. Okay? We need to be on our guard, brethren. We need to stay our course. We need to fight the good fight of faith. Okay? Let, let the Christians be distracted. You and I, Church of the Living God, we need to stay our course. He must increase. We must decrease. The things concerning us have an end, just like with our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, you read about that in Luke. Okay, what is that? Uh, uh, what was that? Luke twenty-two. I think I wrote that down somewhere. No, no, I didn't. Okay, but you know, our time is coming to an end. This is their time in the power of darkness. Okay, we must decrease. He must increase. Okay. And uh, verse 8 again. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, okay, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, see, right there, right there, okay, it's not this, uh, you know, well, you got to do all these three things, you know. Um, uh, where is that? There's no man, but where it's not that you do all these three things, okay. You take the mark of the beast, okay. He's going to say, hey, you want to buy or sell? Take the mark. Gold and silver will be cankered. James talks about that. You got people saying, buy gold and silver, buy gold and silver. Um how is gold and silver going to help you during the time of Jacob's trouble? How are you going to exchange it for your food when that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to be setting up the mark of the beast? Gold and silver is not going to profit you. Okay? Okay? But see, let's see right here. Okay? And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image... How do you worship the beast? Oh, you got to do this, this, this. No, you take the mark and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand. Okay? Some don't want to receive it in the hand, some in the forehead. Okay? Seventh-day Adventists make this error, saying that the uh, mark is the, 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 the little wafer god cookie or the ashes on the forehead. No, 
No, it's an actual, I believe it's a microchip of some kind, okay? That's what I believe. But you are worshiping the, the beast if you receive the mark in your forehead or in your hand. It's not, uh, well, you can do this, this, or this, or you can do this and be safe, cut off your hand, gouge it out. You can do this, be safe, but if you do all three, no. You take that mark at all, you're worshiping the beast. You take that mark at all, you're worshiping the beast. Not step one, step two, step three. No, you take it, you're worshiping the beast. End of story. God's word is simple. Beware of these Jesuit textual critics. Well, the Greeks, shut up. The Lord rebuke you. You take that mark, you're worshiping the beast. Okay? The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Oh, but their soul's just going to be annihilated. Really? And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. You know, the Bollingerites, like, uh, uh, um, oh, what's that twit's name? Murray. Shepherd's Chapel. Okay? Like that, that guy. Okay? Which teaches uh, serpent seed doctrine. But they also soul annihilationism. No... No, what did we just look at? And we didn't even read that whole verse yet. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Whosoever. Any man. During the time of Jacob's trouble. It's faith and works. Let's continue. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. Whosoever, any man. Okay? Let's read verse 14 again. Or, excuse me, let's read verse 11 again. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever. Whosoever. What does that, what does that mean? Anybody. You Christians. During the time of Jacob's trouble. Right. <laughs> You Christians, yeah, I want saved, always saved. That was that's this dispensation, the dispensation of the time of Jacob's trouble. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. You take the mark of the beast. You're going to hell. No ifs, ands, or buts. You are doomed. You are destined for this uh, to be tortured uh, forever, not to have your soul destroyed. Okay. You're going to be tortured forever in the presence of the Lamb. The smoke ascendeth up forever and ever. You take the mark of the beast. You're doing all three things. You take the mark of the beast. You are damned to go to hell. No repenting. No cutting off your hand. Gouging it out of your head. You're done. You're done. Going to the Greek... You know, you can't be euphemistic about this. Oh, go to the Greek. Change the condition. You can't uh, change the name, change change the words. We change the condition. No, dear friend. No. No. You take the mark of the beast. You're going to hell. So, what conditions are there to the mark of the beast? Number one, it's for the dispensation of the time of Jacob's trouble. Number one, you have to rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? Number two, okay? There has to be a falling away, and we're having to fall away. Okay? Number three, there will be the redemption of the purchased possession. Number four, then that man of sin 
the son of uh, perdition will be revealed. Okay? So there are actually quite a few things that happen before the mark of the beast. But see, you have to remember, those of us who are truly saved of the church of the living God, we are not going to be in that time period because we get redeemed before that happens. You have to rightly divide the word of truth, son. Beware, brethren. With the, 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 the replacement theology, people worshiping men and being idol worshipers, the falling away, beware. Be aware. And stay strong. Stay weak in yourselves that the Lord in you may be strong. Because it's just going to get worse, brethren. It's just going to get worse. It's just going to get worse and worse and worse. But we can't let ourselves be distracted. Okay? We can't let ourselves be distracted. We have to keep our eyes upon Jesus. Yes. Can we do that 24 hours a day, 7 days a week? No. Okay? No, we can't. But we have to stay the course. We have to fight the good fight. Okay? We have to fight the good fight. And you have to beware of veiled Replacement theology. You have to beware of veiled non-dispensationalism. Because that is what we are, that is what we are truly battling against, brethren. Those who we thought were of us turn out to not be of us. Heresy of not rightly dividing the word of truth, replacement theology, and people speaking like dragons. Like I've talked to you before, you know, the analogy, you know, the Titanic. Titanic is broken in half. She's filling up with water and she's going down quick. And before that broke in half, there were men aboard the Titanic that kept shoveling coal amidst waters nipping at their heels as a poem went. Still shoveling coal into the uh, to those three-story high boilers to keep electricity on as long as they could until the Titanic busted in half and then it's just a matter of time till she sank. That's us. Water is nipping at our heels. We need to keep shoveling the coals into the fire until we hear come up hither. That is going to be it for this video. This was very impromptu, but um, I, I saw the notification of this uh, certain video, and I watched it, and I'm, I'm like, oh boy, son, son, come on, man. And then the comments section is like, wow, wow, wow. So, like I said, I'm not naming you. If you watch this, I hope you do. I please hope you take these things to heart, okay? I do hope you take these things to heart. If you don't watch this, this is fine. Others will. Others will. But that's going to be it for this video. Um, wow. Thank you, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God, for, wow, for what you have done. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord for you. And may the Lord reward you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for your prayers. This has been a really rough time for us, especially recently. Um, we got a lot of stuff going on. We have up days and then we have down days. We've, we've been having quite a bit of personal struggles going on right now. Uh, so please keep us in your prayers. Please pray for us. Please pray for us. Um, Monday is going to be a busy day for us. Um, my wife has two appointments that she needs to keep. And because my wife is not comfortable in driving, I have to be her chauffeur. So because of that, there will probably not be a video on Monday. Like I said, in Monday, we got, we got a lot of stuff going on right now. So uh, please keep us in your prayers. And please keep each other in your prayers. Pray for one another, brethren. Contact one another. Be there for one another. Because we're all, we're all that we have together on this earth. I mean, we have the Lord Jesus Christ, but we have each other, the church of the living God. Okay? 
And be on the lookout for these things. And when you come across them, you know, as the Lord will guide you, rebuke these, these heresies that you see. Because, like I said, brethren, it's just going to keep getting worse and worse. So. That's going to be it. I'm going to upload this. Thank you so much for watching this if you do. We love you. And we will see you in the next video, whenever that will be, Lord willing. Thank you.